just in case. Absolutely. Uh, let me hand that to you, Tavo, so you've got it. Um, uh, I can make you a host, but not a co-host for some reason. Uh, Bummer, Newman. See you soon. Um, and hey, everybody, it's the 29th of August, 2023. This is Gimbal Labs Carnival. It's our last carnival of August, 2023. And next week on September 5th, we will open up season five of, excuse me, season three of Gimbal Labs Playground. Um, I'll share more about that at the end of this call. What we're here for today is to provide an informal space where people can make connections and share about the different catalyst proposals that you've submitted. Fund 10 of Project Catalyst has been ongoing for the last few months, and voting opens up uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on what corner of the world you live in, but this week, within the next few days. What we're going to do today is just give everybody a chance uh, to make a quick presentation about your Fund 10 proposal. Everybody can have up to seven minutes, as you can see here. And we're going to be pretty careful with the clock just to make sure everybody has time. If your presentation goes for seven minutes, that's fine. If you're done early, it gives us a chance to ask you questions um, before we move on. One of the outcomes of this session today is that this video is already live streaming to YouTube and you'll be able to grab this video and share it with voters in any way that you would like. Um, I'll be sure to add the timestamps after today's call so it's really easy uh, to get to the part of the presentation where you presented. Um, and yeah, I hope this is helpful for getting the word out. If there's not enough time to cover everybody, please just drop a line in the chat. I can see that the agenda is already full. And if there are other folks who want to make a presentation, we might be able to grab a little extra time at the end and just stick around. So just express your interest in the chat. Does anybody have any questions about what we're going to do here today? Yes, I think I, I, we need some other uh, spots in the in the, in the middle of order because I, yeah. I, I am seeing in, the, in this in this meeting some people that don't have, they don't have. Uh, um, I'm going to add one more spot here at the bottom. So I don't, I don't need the time to present today. Um, I would certainly take it if it was available, but anybody wants that last one, grab it. And then beyond that, please, um, please drop a note in the chat if you would also like to present. And at 120, well, this, these are absolute times. Meeting time started at, we say, zero. Um, but after about 90 minutes, if there's a bunch of other folks who want to add a presentation, uh, we can stick around and just keep the live stream rolling so other people can share what they've got. Other questions before we get going? Um, yeah, if you have two, that's a great question. If you have two proposals, try to take just one slot. I know that a lot of us have multiple uh, proposals here, um, but let's make sure to hear from as many different proposers as possible. Um, of course, if you have multiple proposers, excuse me, proposals, um, you can mention those when it's your turn and add as many links as you'd like. That's why there's a little bit of extra space in this chart right here. Thanks, Adriano. Any other questions before we jump in? Great. Um, so just to give you a very quick background on what we're doing here on Tuesdays, um, Gimbal Labs was actually founded during funds one and two of Project Catalyst. And over the last three years, we've really paid a lot of attention to creating spaces where people can make sense of ideas and meet their new collaborators, okay? So whatever happens this week, voting is gonna happen. 
Some people are going to get funded and some are not. I really want to encourage everybody while we're here right now to make sure that you're always just forging new relationships, looking for people whose message resonates with you. Because even if a proposal doesn't work out, it usually doesn't mean it's a bad idea, right? It just means there weren't enough funds to go around yet. And if you can find collaborators, you can really move towards building the project that you really want to build, okay? So I hope that even as all of us in this room are probably competitors in one way or another, because we're all trying to get from, you know, this same pool of, of a little less than 50 million ADA, we also have a lot to collaborate on in the years to come, okay? And I, and I really hope that shines through in the space that we're hosting today. Jose, question? Uh, and you're just, you're muted, so feel free to unmute. Okay. Um, well, Jose, if you have sound, you can chime in later, but let's jump into the agenda. So you can see right here, we're going to go right down this list. If anybody wants to share their screen, just say so. Uh, you're able to share your screen. And Christian, you're up first. Welcome to Gimbal Labs Carnival. Uh, Christian, do you have sound? Is he still here? Hi. Hey, welcome. Hello. How's it going? Thank you. Um... Can I start now? Absolutely, yep. You got seven minutes. Uh, and do you want to share your screen? Okay. Great, I'll stop sharing over here. Looks good, take it away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my name is Christian. I'm from Mexico. And I will to talk about this proposal for developer ecosystem evolution. Uh, the name is Unlocking Potential uh, to make uh, Cardano the go-to choice for developers. So we think the problem or the pain lies in difficulty of engaging, engaging Latin developers into our ecosystem. Um, our solution lies in the delivering uh, fast bootcamps. Fast bootcamps are uh, like bootcamps, but uh, composed for six or eight weeks. In this case, six workshops that have uh, <clears throat> the possibility for students uh, to try and in the development on Cardano blockchain applications, uh, culminating into two hackathons and universities in Mexico. Um, we think this solution is unique because uh, we allow the students to train and to, to, to learn these skills in less time and an uh, accessibility price and, and without the language barrier that is in English because we, had, we want to make this micro uh, fast bootcamps in Spanish. Uh, this is the benefits for existing as oh, no. like promoting inclusion oh, no. and diversity. Sorry, it's okay. Okay, collaboration with universities and a long-term sustainability and evolution. Uh, we think this uh, is a good impact in the ecosystem for developers. This is the timeline from month zero to month eight. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the budget breakdown. Um, we we think in content creation and payment for <clears throat> instructors and experts to delivering these workshops, uh, preparation and execution of hackathons, the final reports and uh, fun and content intensive as well. Um, the team, our team is composed by me and Victor Hernandez. Together we have co-organized um, some workshops from the 6th, uh, 1894 
in Tlaxcala University and another one in Mexico City. And we are part of the Latin community and attending the Pan Latin workshop in Uruguay as well. Um, this is some, some photos and images about the workshop in Tlaxcala and the university with students in, in Mexico City in the Uruguay as well. And I and I will part, I took part of the final workshop seat in the University of Edinburgh, Edinburgh as well. So thank you very much and thank you for, for your attention. That's all. Awesome, Christian, perfect presentation. Thank you and what an inspiring proposal you've got. Anybody have any questions? We got a few minutes before we move on to Raphael. This is with Stanley University, right? What? Yeah, you you are working with some yeah. university. Yes, and the university in Mexico, La Scala, and some days ago. <laughs> Some days ago, we were went to another workshop in another university in Mexico, uh, hosted by IOG as well. Okay, fantastic. So, are you facilitating the workshops yourself or your team, or you are creating a model for the universities to use that information, or both? Like how uh, we, are you like a quest or um, yeah yeah so we want to to make uh, the the content for these workshops but uh, we want to to connect and collaborate with another people in this community uh, for delivering these workshops because we have we don't have the background or the knowledge to deliver in this kind of education but we had just connect uh, universities with developers into our ecosystem to attract in external developers and students. Thank you. Uh, this is great. And you've already been to workshops with some members of the Gimbal Labs team. So I, I hope it goes without saying that we'd love to support you in this work. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Really glad you guys are doing it's a great it. collaboration. Yes, I have to say we are in conversations to uh, Gimbal Labs start to collaborate with, with this project, with these workshops. Good. Thank you for your support, and thank you for having me in this in this festival in this this event. And thank you very much. Okay. Our pleasure. And everybody, just make sure that you drop any relevant links here on the Miro board. We will make sure that those get into the show notes on YouTube, and then you can grab those and bring those wherever you'd like. Okay. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Raphael, you're up next. What have you got for us? Hello, everyone. Nice Welcome. to meet you guys and to be here today. And thanks for the opportunity. I'd like to share my screen. So I'll just go ahead and do it uh, also yeah, i'm not christian do you mind unsharing um, I got him. We go. okay thanks also hopefully the internet will be good i'm not home i'm currently traveling so i don't really know how good is this internet but hopefully <laughs> it will be fine any problems just tell me in the comments or something and i'll try to to see what i can do but yeah so i'm i'm ready to start if that's okay that's great take it away Ooh, thanks so hi everyone my name is rafael and my proposal is to basically create a dao run by the cardano community for marketing education and the creation of uh, content so basically we are trying to solve two big problems. One is that the blockchain, cryptocurrency, Cardano, it's something hard to understand for normal people and for the majority of people, both from the technical side and how to use it, but also understand why it is important for them and the benefits it can bring into their lives. 
And one thing that really helps bring people into the space and start this journey of understanding our content creators and their work. That is crucial to onboard people. But the reality is that even though content creators bring a lot of value to us, people listening to them bring a lot of value to the blockchain, they have very limited incentives to do so. It's mostly a labor of passion and the majority of content creators in Cardano right now doesn't make enough to be able to dedicate to this art full time, I would say. So basically the solution would be to create this DAO. A DAO focused on supporting content creation, where we would give a direct voice to the Cardano community to come here and say what videos they want to see, vote on what they think is important for onboarding of the Cardano of new members to the Cardano community. We would have an, an institution for education and marketing that would define a clear strategy, something we don't really have right now. And content creators would be supported to be able to keep on creating content. In terms of the impact of this solution, first, we have the community that will be given direct voice in the kind of content that should be crea created and in the onboarding process of new members. They also have incentives to share the, the video, the, the work of the DAO, for the DAO to grow further and to reach more people. We have content creators that are rewarded and have another source of income to be able to dedicate to creating content more seriously and do it in a more professional manner. It's also a great place for projects. Projects can come in and just uh, ask for content in terms of tutorials, in terms of explaining people how to use their app, strategies and everything, and just onboarding more people from this community directly into their projects. And um, it also creates awareness because we would have a specific strategy in terms of marketing and reaching new people. And it could also act as a very important place for debate about Cardano because it's a DAO run channel, a, a channel that would belong to Cardano. So everyone could come here and share their opinions in this new era of governance. In terms of advantages to current solutions, basically we would have the community supporting, involved and with rewards to take this project further. We would have content creators being supported to keep growing their content. But more than that, they would also work together, share knowledge and collaborate to reach more people. And that would also help them in their growth. They could share their audiences in this platform as well. And finally, we would have a broader reach because we would have everyone working together to, um, let's say, promote Cardano or to create awareness about Cardano uh, in other crypto, in other blockchains and other communities, but also outside of that. Here uh, is a, the Discord for the proposal. We would love to have you there because this is the DAO. We need your input. And if you like Cardano, if you want to see it succeed, um, you're super welcome to, to come here and we want to have your input. And then you can read the proposal here and just my YouTube channel because I've been a content creator for Cardano. And that's how I came up with these and also a lot of the ideas for the governance process. Thank you. And which, which challenge is this uh, proposal in? DAOs love Cardano. Excellent. Good. Yeah, I love that you're taking that approach of using the DAO structure to solve this problem of, of funding content creation. Really cool. Uh, we've got a couple minutes. Does anybody have any questions for FIL? I guess it's no question. <laughs> it's too clear that we need this, right? Um, I, once again, I see a lot of ways for folks to collaborate. This is really exciting. And I know that within Gimbal Labs, we're finding that content creation, it's its so critical. And we, we make a lot of videos for the courses that we teach, um, but it takes a lot of time. And like you said, it's a labor of passion. So if we can start finding ways uh, not only to 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 kind of fund that work from a treasury level but to see reasons for that work to exist from a broader project level i think we're going to start to see some real innovative approaches um, and i think collaboration is going to be a big part of that so i hope you'll be in touch yeah, yeah. working on a quite a big challenge because which, which has been years now we creating content trying to recognize it and fund it and it's 
not easy. And I guess I feel like the old schoolers maybe have now pivoted to pushing the specific content that they now have expertise on. And we do need this kind of new wave of innovators who look at this stuff that is being created and connecting these passionate people, including their own, what they bring to them. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, it's also like interesting to just try to involve more people because it's also hard as a content creator besides not getting anything. It's like sometimes you don't get the reach you would want. Because after all, you're also doing it out of passion, but you want people to be able to see it. And sometimes that's hard. You know, if we could get the community, use blockchain and this DAO structure to align incentives to get like the people that see the content, but also the people that create it to work together and, you know, uh, combine their efforts, I think we can reach further, let's say, hopefully and we'll test it. If, it, if it's approved, it's going to be probably like Project Catalyst, a kind of a experimental process that will hopefully work I, I think it can that's why yeah i'm proposing it that's a great mindset all right that takes us straight into the next seven minute proposal Raphael, thank you again and simon thank you guys. welcome back to gimbal labs good to see you uh, good to see you too man um and everyone else as well uh thank you for joining uh, let me share my screen real quick So yeah, I'm here for Cardano After Dark, uh, just like the last time. Uh, James and hopefully others know already um, who we are and what we're about. Uh, so, but for everyone else, let us introduce real quick. So there's Patrick, Jake, Randall, and me. And there's a bunch of other contributors uh, throughout uh, Cardano who helped us, you know, with all the findings, all the codes that we developed, and all the um, all the learnings that we had so far to build a poker dApp uh, on Cardano, which we have been funded for. And then uh, with the poker dApp, we realized there's some, some other things we need, uh, like fast uh, connections between players, uh, which is a dread, but I'm getting ahead of my, myself. So we are still looking for other people who are willing to contribute, uh, dApp developer, smart contract developer, as you see on the right, uh, if you're interested, um, just go to the last slide. I will post it in the chat. And, you know, get in contact with us. We're really friendly. Um, so the challenge ahead is for us. Uh, we want to build real-time depths, uh, and those need uh, real-time communication with encrypted channels. We're implementing complex rules and policies in a decentralized environment, which is uh, you know, poker qualifies for, I think. Uh, then one of the challenges also is we have a lack of infrastructure for Dread State Challenge. So we developed Dread yet now, decentralized Dread is. Um, but there's no applications on it yet, except for our, our little demo um, where you can send voice messages. But yeah, and with that, there comes uh, limited examples and know-how for integrations, right? Which kind of creates that cycle that we try to break out of. So for the decentralized API architecture, which is our first um, proposal that I want to introduce, we, we are trying to use thread state channels for a decentralized API. So yeah, um, this is mainly Randall's brainchild. So I can't talk too much about it, but as I understand it, there are still some issues with um, with API architecture as it is now, uh, like the state uh, chance for requested response, decentralized load balancer, monitoring load requests, and reward system for load distribution, which uh, for us right now is a stretch goal. Um, what I'm very familiar with though is the decentralized poker app that we're trying to build. Um, so we're really trying to build a, a poker solution that is, you know, peer to peer. So you have like a style like connection, uh, like a fully decentralized poker game. 
We want to build it transparent and trustless. So there's no one, no man in the middle. No one can, um, you know, can look at the cards or do anything shady on the server. Um, and it uses uh, CK proofs, which um, we, you know, moved to after we found out that the Kaleidoscope paper, uh, which is here at the bottom here, um, and the Royal paper is not really enough to uh, to build a poker dApp on Cardano with previous funding that we had uh, through Catalyst. Um, so how would it how would poker advance the ecosystem? So enabling traditional API to transi transition to decentralized infrastructure, enabling real-time interactive dApps by using state channels, fostering innovation and increasing developer engagement, attraction of a broader audience and developers, hopefully. I mean, there's like 60 million plus um, poker players in the world. So let's hope we attract some of the some of them, some of the developers as well. Um, enhanced security and resilience. And we try to enable fair distribution and rewards, which is, I mean, yeah, this is really a challenge with with poker, but also with threat when, you know, when it comes to uh, rewarding people for, uh, for putting their debts online and, uh, uh, you know, serving, serving those and creating the service. And uh, we snuck, I sneaked in here uh, a third proposal, Dread, oh, sorry, the first one, Dread C Poker integration, which is basically combining those two, right? So we have developed Dread, we have a lot of learnings to C Poker, but yeah, but we haven't integrated C Poker or Dread into C Poker yet. Um, yeah, for that, of course, we have to develop C Poker. But yeah, as I said, we have learned a lot. One of the problems that we had, and I just want to make this clear now, we are asking for quite a bit of money. But one of the problems that we had was that we didn't have enough money to develop such a thing because building this is hard. It takes um, you know dedicated people who you know work forty hours a week or so to to get this done. And yeah, so. So these are our proposals. Please, um, you know, join us and uh, look at the proposals. Vote for us. Um, contact us. Join us. And thank you. Right at the finish line, Simon. Thanks, and it's incredible to see this project developing. Um, and I think you've done a great job illustrating kind of how much you guys have learned about the necessary tech by jumping into this project. Um, I hope we can get you to do a longer playground presentation sometime in the next few weeks. I would love that. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, but we're going to move right along uh, to Quasar and Adriano with the, what does GCFS stand for? This sounds pretty exciting. Hey, James. Hi, hey, everyone. Man. Thanks for, thanks for this uh, space. <laughs> it's nice to, to see you all again. <laughs> Hey, um, I'm trying to share the screen. Okay, I need bigger glasses, I guess. <laughs> okay, here, here I go. So, what is uh, what is GCFS? Um, it it is an on-chain file storage protocol on Cardano. Um, and it's, uh, it can be a world beyond just on-chain files because we kind of stuck, like get stuck on the file idea, but we forget about uh, much more stuff that we can uh, pay, pay attention to, right? So very quickly, um, basically um, what we have been analyzing on, on Cardano these, these two years, um working on, on it is that um we are we have like a tendency to um uh to create opaque and, and hard to interoperate uh applications and protocols on Carvana. 
And these uh, even, um, uh, uh, it's not decentralized enough sometimes because we uh, centralized a lot on backends uh, and on code that cannot be easily out, uh, audited uh, by uh, even the, the the end user, right? We we think that only experts can or should audit code, but if we work in a way that even the end user can have some saying on what is happening, you know, uh, behind uh, his wallets, okay, it's I mean her or, or his wallets. Uh, it it can change the way we we work on the ecosystem, uh, and there is much other stuff that maybe you can read later on the video. Um, basically, with GCFS, not just files on chain, but data stored on on Cardano uh, in in such a way, like for example, uh, as NFTs, as we for example create NFTs enforcing cryptography uh, ownership over, over these assets, we can really change the way we build. Um, so basically, we lost a lot of things from Ethereum. Ethereum had a lot of um, issues, and we fixed like a lot of them. But maybe we forgot one of the, the main benefits of Ethereum. Um, and if we start building in such a way, we can store some some more data on chain that cannot be just data. Maybe it's code, and uh, we uh, work in an in an open and prepare for interoperability uh, way. Um, I mean, we, we can change change things. We can push uh, stuff more on the browser, on the end user side, not on backends. We can we can make a shift on, on how we maybe are building. The combination of the two technologies we are offering with Game Changer, um, the five system and the, the DSL we have to interact with the wallet. Uh, this can allow, allow us a lot of uh, um, benefits, right? Um, but yes, we, we like to uh, build first and then ask for money. So that's that's the thing we have uh, this uh, offer to the Cardano community since April first of this year, and uh, we are asking money to to improve and build more tooling because right now, for example, for accessing this file system, we need to uh, do it through the API of the wallet through the the app connector. But if we have, for example, um, HTTP as, uh, servers uh, to, to mirror and serve this information, we could have 100%, for example, decentralized applications on Cardano. Um, decentralized, I mean, sorry, the decentralized storage uh, censorship resistance application, applications, sorry. This is what, uh, what's, what the milestones are for the project. Uh, you can check everything more in detail on the proposal. And you can check and um, even try it right now if you want. We are on, on pre prod. Uh, and we, I, I mean, um, we invite you all to, after the town hall, um, these breakout rooms, uh, after the town hall on Wednesday, Wednesdays, um, to have live coding sessions uh, and to, uh, you know, uh, learn how we can collaborate and build together um, also under the gimbal apps umbrella <laughs> and james if i have one second to talk about the other one super quick at least i will you show got 40 you seconds okay <laughs> 40 seconds it's okay um this project bubble fees and sponsor transactions now so why wait for protocol updates if we can have it right now on a web free manner on uh, end you know on end users wallets uh, for all the apps integrating game changer if you help us we can also deliver this bubble fees and sponsor transactions uh, on Cardano. thanks thanks <laughs> that's it well done hey that was a really nice short pitch right there for the second one and 
thank you as always for leading the way. Uh, Adriano, I know you've seen the future and you're just waiting for the rest of us to catch up. So thanks for thanks for building and for, for all these tools. Can't wait to hear more. Thanks, um, Next we have um, Simon. Hey, welcome. We have a, an agenda and a Miro board and I'm gonna ask you to check that out for us, okay? Because we're on yep. the clock and we have Percy up next. But it's good to see you. Yeah, hello, everyone. Welcome, Percy. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me there. So let me share my screen. Uh, yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Percy. I'm from Vietnam. And uh, I'm a project owner for Mitoon, uh, a web three comic platform. So glad to be here and share about our idea, empowering dream, the kind of revolution. So let's talk a bit about how we come to this idea. Uh, with Smart Lab, the comic market is really big and has potential. Well, for example, in, in Webtoon, it arrived for, for 65 billion in 2022. For manga, it around 10.5 billion in 2023. And for comic, it hit about 8.5 billion in 2021. That is a symbol of the webtoon.com. I think it's a leading global webtoon platform with over 300 million monthly visits. And there also other top manga sites such as Gunty Roll and Mega Death, which had the same amount of monthly visits. So this is the evidence for the popularity of this market. So, and most of the manga sites or comic sites are free reading and make a huge amount of money from advertisement. And this is a rather they are generating income solely from the artist product. And unfortunately, many artists um, receive less than they deserve due to very talent set up. They have to build their own re reputation and gain fame before media company invest in them. For example, in popular platform like Webtoon, artists need to reach 1,000 subscribers and 40,000 pay view monthly to be eligible for sharing ad revenue. And furthermore, most of manga uh, comic sites are free reading uh, and make, making money from advertisement, but they, uh, but they are not providing any healthy working environment or compensation to the well. And moreover, there are a lot of situations that artists who got sick or even died due to the high pressure from the publication and platform term during uh, working on the art. So, and therefore, also a lot of successful series have faced this struggle and had to be put on hold or be continued despite having a dedicated Sunday. So, um, so bring to our solution. Our we uh, meet on an empowering web three commit platform for artists around the world that can help their turn turn their dream into reality from the very beginning using Cardinal SBOs and smart contract. This is also bring sustainable benefits to the Cardinal ecosystem. Unlike other current web to commit platform that still erupt their creative works. Meantime, we had them connect with investors to Cardinal SBO so they can raise funds from the beginning until they become famous. So we soon ensure that Arctic were also made fairly at the model that Spotify and Olyphant do on our platform. And also we use an AI recommendation similar to Netflix to ensure Artic read the right audience who love the theory, not the fit category way like mostly 
commit side do. And that way we absolutely empower us and connect them with the fan who appreciate their work. So in this project, we not only focus on develop the product, we also build our artic community online to uh, various platforms like Facebook, Reddit, or Twitter, and apply to articular community, or also participate some some comic event. Right? And by the end of the first month, when we complete our MVD, we we start educating and involving the artist to collaborate with us. At the same time, we, we connect with investor community on Canada ecosystem and plan to initiate the SVO at the same moment. So introduce a bit um, from our team. So there we will be hiring more, but basically the core team from start will be um, uh, we will be uh, three people you, I can show you. Um, and there are also the collaboration and practical spark from um, Mr. Tim from Canon Lotubian and also the um, ambassador, uh, Canada ambassador in Vietnam. So check on our vision, join us and spark the transformative journey for by voting for our proposal. Uh, it's named the Empowering Dream Canon Comic Revolution. Uh, thanks for your you guys person. Yeah, then you can have questions. Beautiful, wonderful, and you know it's it's fascinating. The problems you're naming are so relevant to the comic book industry in this case, but to so yes. many other creative industries. So if you guys can pull this off, there's a lot of other people who will benefit. Um, yes, as uh, we also the uh, Rick does. Yes, so we are really enthusiastic about commit. I can read a ton of commit uh, to the night. And yeah, and we we have to to, to uh, come to this um, problem like uh, a few years, two years recently, one or two years recently. And a lot of them, uh, big commit, big commit side were, they just, um, they just, um, you know, you just have to do something um, to put, uh, to support artists, but it's just a few big uh, commissar. And yeah. there are also a lot of. <laughs> we we definitely yeah. need to talk more. This could there there's a lot more that we could look at here, and I'm looking forward to being in touch. Um, but we're gonna keep the fast pace rolling for now. Uh, our dear friend Juanita is here to present on Latin women building in Cardano. Hello and welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Juanita Ramillo. Uh, with Mercedes Ruggeri, our proposal is Cardano Pen, Latin women building in Cardano. Uh, thank you very much for your support and the opportunity. Um, this is our presentation. Yeah, yeah. We believe in the strength and power of women. That is the reason for the existence of Caron Femme. In an ever evolving world, we recognize and celebrate the pivotal role that women play in all aspects of society. Our proposal, Caron Femme, aims to highlight, empower, and support women in their pursuit of achievements and leadership across diverse fields. Cardano Femme is not just an initiative, but an inclusive and progressive movement that seeks to promote gender equality and provide women with the necessary tools to thrive. We believe in women's unique ability to innovate, lead, and make a difference in fields ranging from technology to politics, from science to the arts. Our approach is based on the following pillars. One, education and development. We provide educational opportunities that allow women to acquire technical skills, leadership, and knowledge in areas where they have been historically underrepresented. 
2. Economic empowerment. We support female entrepreneurship by providing resources and support networks to help women establish and grow their own businesses. 3. Visibility and recognition. We highlight the achievements of women in various disciplines and promote role models to inspire future generations. 4. Political and social participation. We encourage active participation of women in political and social decision making, creating an environment where their voices are heard and respected. 5. Collaboration and community. We create a space where women can connect, collaborate, and share experiences, thus strengthening the support network and sense of community. At Cardano Femme, we believe that empowering women is essential to building a more equitable and prosperous future. Through our efforts, we aspire to break down barriers, overcome stereotypes, and create an environment where all women can reach their full potential. Join us on this exciting journey towards gender equality and the empowerment of women. Together, we can create a world where all voices matter and all contributions are valued. Okay, thank you very much. Much is our proposal, Mercedes Ruggeri, Tobiodo, and me. This work uh, for one year in this proposal is our growth. And thank you, thank you very much, James, Gimba Labs, and Damian, Sebastian, and the others for the, your support. Thank you for spearheading this work. We, we need you on this terribly, and I'm so glad you're doing it. Thanks for the leadership. Steven calls the show in this call alone. <laughs> it's a much of yeah, Look around. <laughs> it's <laughs> exhibit A. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody else have questions for the Cardano team, Cardano FM team? Maybe I'm um, the probably you haven't it, but just wondering, have you found Cardano for women or there is also a space created for women who just uh, did content and kind of join Catalyst? I think I'm not sure did they get funded or anything, but they did. There was a movement here with, <laughs> and I'm just wondering, have you collaborated, seen each other, or and if not, maybe I will try to find links and connect. And or maybe from your side, have you found any other women groups that are in Catalyst, but we just not aware about because we are about just our technical stuff that you're lifting up? Yeah, I think there's other groups, right? But this is, I think we're still waiting to see like a, a critical movement. And so I think it's it's exciting to see this work happening. Um, same as always. And I hope, I hope this invitation comes through loud and clear just to everybody here, whether I said it or not. Um, every Tuesday um, from September through June, we host what's called Gimbal Labs Playground. And if you'd ever like to give a longer presentation about your work, to ask us questions about something you're struggling with, uh, or to build new collaborations, everybody's welcome. And I hope that we can get uh, the Cardano Femme team in here once every couple of months to share updates on what you're doing. Great. All right. Let's go, let's go deep into Goroboros now. Chris, what's happening? Hey, how's it going? Uh, let me Welcome. turn around. Hey, how's it going? 
Uh, yeah, so I don't actually have a, a good slide deck for this. So I'm going to just kind of pitch it and uh, pitch pretty much the, <laughs> the works. Uh, yeah, so Goroboros is a Go implementation of the native communication for Cardano. So like on the wire, how nodes talk to each other, how applications talk to nodes, all of that is Ouroboros. Uh, and we've been writing it in Go instead of Haskell. So we completed the client side in fun nine and for fun 10 uh, we're looking to complete the server side of it which allows us to build applications that are more rich or potentially building full nodes uh building light nodes uh, that are partial nodes being able to provide certain functionality uh and and that sort of thing we actually have plenty of examples of it already in, in case uh uh, uh, of this kind of stuff being used. But our, our proposal is to complete that and complete the library so it's usable by anybody trying to write applications in Golang. Um, aside from that, we actually have a, a second one, which is uh, along the same vein. It's also a continuation of our Fun9 work on Goroboros, uh, but it is actually a fully realized implementation of an HTTP API over top of that Ouroboros. So what that means is it allows web browsers to be able to talk to this application and that application will be able to communicate with the blockchain correctly. Um, this is very similar in, in idea to uh, Agmios. So it's it's very much like an application you run next to a Cardano node or with a Cardano node to be able to get uh, data out of it easily. And the important part is being able to get that data out using web APIs and, you know, like web front ends and things like that without having to understand this deep, crazy communication and, and uh, knowledge, which is the black arts of Ouroboros. So the Cardano node API is taking all of the fun nine Ouroboros client side and exposing all of it, essentially meaning you can ask questions of a Cardano node. The Goroboros server, uh, thing is to be the responder. So as I said, the client side allows you to ask questions to a Cardano node. The server side allows Goroboros to be the responder now. So we would be able to create essentially a Go node that would be capable of responding to those questions without having to proxy to any other uh, uh, application to be able to get this kind of stuff. Now, this is just a building block. This won't actually build us a full node uh, implementation, but it's the next step. And it also allows anyone to come in and potentially build their own full node uh, or anything like that on top of the Goroboros library. So, you know, we're obviously open to competition uh, for sure uh, uh, and collaboration. And the nice thing is, is everything is open source and it's all open sourced under uh, an Apache license, which specifically allows it to be used in commercial applications. So I see uh, uh, Mr. Lucas over there, you know, from Maestro, uh, who will know, you know, that like the, we, we absolutely encourage that. We encourage people to build on our software, um, you know, if they're even for things that they're not necessarily open sourcing themselves, you know, but also for things that's open source. So it's built that way and designed that way. Right. We want people to use it all over the place. Yeah, I'm I actually skirted quick. Incredible. Can, is it okay if we steal those lines in the PBL course that the, the client is for asking questions and the server is for orchestrating those? I just, I love yeah, that, yeah, that breakdown right there. It's beautiful. Um, and for anybody who hears the words Ouroboros and Agmios and you start to glaze over, uh, <laughs> just, just know that this is going to make the kinds of applications that all of us trained on web to usability, it's going to take that a, a huge leap closer to that kind of performance and capability and application to kind of see these tools going online. So Chris, right. thank uh, you. Oh, no problem. And actually something I kind of forgot, uh, in case anybody cares why we're writing all this stuff in Go instead of like Haskell, uh, Go is the third fastest growing programming language on GitHub. Um, so it has lots and lots of developers. It was written by Google. It was written explicitly for building network applications with high concurrency. So it was, you know, again, designed by Google specifically for doing the task of being able to scale to global needs. Um, you know, so we're, we're adapting as much as we can to that ecosystem. And Go PBL just has a nice ring to it. So we might have to do yeah, something we'll about to do that. <laughs> um, 
And, and you know, just in principle, right, before Goroboros, how many implementations of Ouroboros were there? Two. Right. So at any time we add implementations, it's just better for this. You know, we, we all claim we're here for distributed or decentralized systems, and this is a huge step in that too, right? We want to have options. Thanks for making it happen. Um, Thanks. Easy vote. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Um, Augustine in the house. Hey, man. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Um, you don't need to share my screen. Can you hear me well? Yes, we got gotcha. you. Good. So I'm glad, very glad to be here. Thank you, Jumba Labs, for the invitation. Um, I'm doing a proposal catalyst with my team Modulo P that regards zero knowledge proof. So I will explain this. Um, so if you ask uh, what are zero knowledge proof, these are a range of cryptography schemes that rely on the idea of demonstrating something like a secret of or a fact with a proof instead instead of re directly revealing the information so here you usually to demonstrate something you show 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 the information but here we substitute with a proof and that allows you to hide information or compress information and this uh, new uh, crypto cryptographic uh, schemes uh, have very novel application in the blockchain space. Uh, for example, in privacy, you have anonymous swaps and privacy enhanced apps that use this technology and also has application on the scalability on the, scalability, on the use of bridges, rollups, and cross-chain protocols. So this uh, cryptographic schemes allows these uh, a lot of applications uh, and that are very important for blockchain. And particularly one uh, of one zero knowledge group that have become very important in the blockchain space are SNARKs because they are small, they are cheap to storage. They are very efficient compared to the other types of zero knowledge proofs, and they are non interactive. So that means that you don't have to make a lot of transactions that could saturate the network. So they very suited to use in the context of a blockchain. So, uh, what's going on in Cardano regarding uh, this field of zero knowledge? We see that Cardano is up to date, very mature. Uh, there's a key piece that is missing that is the verification of this proof and that is that's that's it's supposed to happen on chain and currently we uh, we don't have the for many reason we we can do that right now so that's a thing that our proposal want to address and on the other hand we we have an opportunity to to bring some progress that are occurring on other regions of the blockchain space like Ethereum that are pushing forward this technology a lot. And we can bring this innovation uh, to Cardano and that way we can progress. So although we are immature, we have a lot of opportunities to progress uh, in this field. Uh, if we uh, bring, we, if we bring this other progress to Cardano. So our proposal want to address that. And there's, like I said, a two challenges to do that. One is adaptation. You have to implement in Cardano the validator that, uh, that validates the proof. And you have to uh, deal with 
efficiency problem because although uh, the snarks are very fast, uh, equal to, they are they are still they are very very resource resource friendly. So um, currently there's a SIP going on to address this, but it's for the Plutus V3. And, and, and it's very far away. So we want, uh, with my team, we did a middle step. So we tried to use, uh, implement, we tried to implement CK snarks in, in Hydra. So that way we can, uh, with that powerful tool, we can do the zero knowledge verification in that, in, in the isomorphic heads of Hydra. So we did a, uh, proof of concept that we sent to a Murro hackathon. And we want to improve uh, that proof of concept and, and make a zero knowledge framework. The idea is to do a, a catalyst proposal that will be open source and consists on, on two things. One is a smart contract library that the developers can use these uh, zero knowledge validators. So we have we want to provide the, the implementation of the, the CK snarks to on chain. And we want to uh, bring tooling to the developer, developers to you to integrate their dApps to Hydra and, and, and use this uh, use this technology. So the the project it will be developed be, will be developed in four to six months and uh, request uh, to to fund to 22k so um, that's it uh, if you want to know more uh, there's more information and let it, let it, that's it thank you oh. brilliant and hey, congrats on the, the win at the Emergo Hackathon. That was such Thank great you. news. Um, yeah, the, the ZK Mastermind demo is one of my favorite things I've seen in the last few months. Um, ah, thank you. Because... And thank you, Gimbal Labs, because our team, uh, in part, uh, joining the cast, Gimbal Labs, we, we are a team with Quantum, so. Without a doubt. We made um, that we, we were team for here. Always. Now, and, and we were talking last week about, you know, advanced Plutus PBL modules, and you and I were talking about Aiken, um, but it goes without saying, I think that you guys are doing some work with ZK proofs and, and Hydra itself, that obviously all of that, I hope uh, we can find a place for it in this or some advanced uh, PBL course. Great stuff. Thank Thanks. Thanks, Augustine. Um, also close to home, we have our friend Ali. What's up, partner? Hey, hello, everyone. Um, I'm great to be here. Um, really, I'm excited by all these uh, great proposal and you know voting and all the you know, all the fun after voting. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm impatiently waiting for this thing happen. So today uh, I'm here. I didn't have a plan to present, but I, I saw that there is this opportunity and uh, I took it. So the, today I'm presenting uh, Equival, the project we are working about a year on it. And allow me to share my screen. Um, so Equival is uh, we can call it the first peer-to-peer uh, -peer non-custodial uh, marketplace in Cardano. And uh, with this marketplace, we are aiming and we are trying to solve many issues, which I'm going to talk with you guys. I'm sure uh, I would love to hear your feedback. The first uh, problem is uh, sending money and receiving money. And if I show you the the design and the uh, looks of this application. This is the uh, uh, UI design of that uh, application. Here, uh, people can post their offer, the offer for 
uh, exchanging crypto to fiat or fiat to crypto to any fiat or any crypto uh, they like, and of course, and we support uh, as well. So uh, by doing that, we are uh, kind of removing the middleman we are facing today for sending and receiving money uh, globally. Normally, once we want to, especially with crypto exchange in that, we have to go through a centralized exchange. And centralized exchange, I think we all know that there have a lot of problems. And simply if we search uh, crypto hacks, which I did, we can see that uh, the first 10 uh, major hacks about a crypto uh, was done and happened uh, to central exchanges and uh, billions of dollars were lost because in order to exchange something and you want to convert your crypto to fiat or your fiat to crypto, you have to deposit your assets, uh, whether it is fiat or crypto, to that exchange and you have to trust that uh, entity to uh, make it secure. And then uh, after converting and exchanging, then you can uh, withdraw it or send it to any destination you want. Whereas in Equival, you don't need to do that. In Equival, uh, the smart contract handles these exchange uh, between people. And uh, the smart contract itself is completely non-custodial. So even Equival doesn't have any power over the fund inside that. And uh, the uh, taker or maker, the people who uh, create an offer and uh, take that offer and uh, are starting to trade with each other, have the power and access to that particular fund inside the contract. So... Uh, the first and major problem we are uh, trying to solve is the uh, problem of central exchanges. And we want to give this solution of decentralized and non-custodial. And the other thing is the cost. The cost of uh, just converting this to for many people uh, in low income and uh, middle income countries are quite high. Uh, according to uh, uh, GSMA, which is the organization for mobile money, uh, sorry, for mobile operator around the world, mobile money cost for remittance just in 2022 was $626 billion. And it is just a fee. And this uh, mobile money technology mostly been used by African uh, countries and, uh, and normally in low income and middle income countries. So uh, you might ask, well, how much is that fee? Well, right now, as the, uh, the survey and the study shows, it is 3.70 cent per cent. If, 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 if someone wants to send uh, uh, almost $10, uh, $10. So around 30%, 30% is just the fee for sending money from, for example, Canada to uh, somewhere in uh, like Africa or South uh, America, if, if they support mobile money. But the lowest would be around 15%. So with Equival, we are uh, hoping to minimize this uh, transfer and this cost for people. Uh, another problem we are uh, uh, trying to solve with this uh, application is uh, the lack of liquidity for stable coins in, in inside our uh, uh, community, because for example, in coin market cap, if you search for Jet, which is right now is our sole uh, uh, stable coin, we can see these market uh, Jet is available, and as we can see, the only place you can buy your jet with your fiat or you convert that jet a separate coin to any fiat is just this uh, centralized exchange the other one are just swapping and you cannot do uh, anything else with that but uh, in equival people who have fiat can come in here and open an offer create an offer and say for example hey i have ten thousand dollar and i want a jet for example in exchange well, uh, the people who have JET and they want fiat, 
they can come and uh, uh, convert that. Also, this uh, application, we are focusing to make it as a, uh, region specific. So you might travel somewhere and you don't have access to uh, something uh, like a, your a bank account. Here, there is an option for cash in person. So you can uh, search inside the marketplace, find someone or a place or an exchange or entity within that uh, uh, region or within that uh, place and you can go and exchange your cash with crypto or if you have crypto you can exchange it with cash so uh, hey, Nick, we're at the we're at the time so, limit so, yeah now. thank give you us, for give us the for, quick for pitch. Helping us. so the so the application uh, I should say that the application is works in both ways. So people can post their, if they have fiat and they want to uh, get the crypto or they have a crypto and they want uh, to have a, a fiat. And I hope we can get a, a voting and funding so we can move this forward and uh, we can publish this as soon as possible. Thank you incredible work and and guys thank you I, I know that that you and Shanti have built a team of of just really thoughtful folks so for anybody who doesn't know uh, a lot of Ecuval is being built by Mix and Jonti, who are also Plutus PBL instructors here at Gimbal Labs so uh, really excited to see you guys taking that out into the world and I'm excited to see it going online uh, last but not least Roberto what have we been cooking up with Andamio Hey everybody! Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for the for the space. I'm gonna steal a little bit of your time. First of all, sorry for the wall of text on the chat. Uh, that's pretty much all of the relevant links you need uh, for not just this proposal that I'm going to be talking about today, but also um, our other proposals for Fun Ten. Please feel free to have a look. Any comments or suggestions or questions, please reach out and, and let us know. So let me just share my screen and full screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna talk today about our Fun10 uh, products and integrations challenge proposal, which is called Andamio by Gimbal Labs. And we're calling it an open source education and collaboration system. And so, we, when we first asked ourselves why build a, this product that we're creating, the simple answer, a simplistic answer would be to improve contributor onboarding, but the implications are much broader. And the reality is that nowadays, reskilling and upskilling is becoming an increasingly important uh, uh, task, right? We, the old way of working, which was a 25 year career in the same company, that's gone. Nowadays, we constantly need to be learning new skills and adapting just to uh, sort of go with the flow of technology and constant change in organizations. And so we thought, we think that the current process from recruitment to onboarding is incredibly uh, resource intensive. It's costly and time, in, time uh, both in time and money. Um, and it is an inefficient way of matching talent to organizations. And the result of this is disengagement and talent that's not motivated to work on the problems that the organization is hoping to solve. And this has a lot of implications, a lot of uh, waste in terms of resources and, and time. Uh, it also does not, the current recruitment to onboarding process does not focus on skill sets which is something that is really important when we're talking about doing this fit from talent to organizations. And it's not flexible. So both organizations and uh, contributors get locked in this process that it's mostly lose-lose. So we believe that these are fixing these problems are prerequisites for large scale collaboration, which is going to be needed to address problems that we're gonna start facing, we're already facing like climate, ch climate change. So, uh, so how we're going to do this is, sorry, I missed this slide here. How we're going to do this is through a blockchain-based learning management system that tracks user skill acquisition and contributions. And when we talk about on-chain skill acquisition tracking is that we give, this platform allows our organizations to provide PBL-based courses, programs, where the participants are, are presented with mastery-based assessments. And we're going to talk a little bit about that further on. 
And once they complete these assessments, the, that, this um, skill acquisition is recorded on their, on, on their token. And so what this does is it, it, it fulfills a dual purpose. The first is to reward the time and effort the contributor spends completing these assessments. Uh, so we focus on certifying skill acquisition, not just program completion. And that is one of the reasons that we've chosen PBL as a, as a teaching methodology. And the second is that because this token records this skill acquisition, this, uh, this ability to apply knowledge acquired, you can use this token to grant access to participatory roles. Uh, for example, uh, one of our proposals is to create a PBL program for Project Catalyst and a token for Project Catalyst could be used to provide access to participatory roles like DREPs or proposers or proposal reviewers, for example. So why use Andamio? There are already uh, learning management systems out there. Uh, there are different options. So why use Andamio specifically? What we believe that uh, creating a blockchain-based learning management system does is allow us, allows us to provide a couple of things. The first is security because uh, it's on, built on a decentralized platform. So this makes it less vulnerable to security breaches and data manipulation. Uh, it, it's also interoperable. So skills that you've acquired in one Andamio instance could be transferred to other Andamio instances. And as the network of Andamio instances grow, your possibility to contribute and participate in different programs, learning programs and acquire skills grows with it. And then it's traceable. And because it's traceable, uh, these on-chain on -chain records provide transparency and accountability. So how does Andamio, how does an Andamio PBL work? So we've talked about, talked about a tokenized, tokenized identifier, which the Andamio pl platform provides. And we talked about mastery-based learning. And when we talk about uh, mastery-based le learning is learning that focuses on the attainment of skills and knowledge rather than just progress through a curriculum. So the emphasis is placed on depth of understanding and the ability to apply that knowledge to real world situations. And so because we are using uh, mastery-based learning, this means that the skills acquired and recorded in the token are not just representative of the participation in a course or a certification of spending some time doing some tasks, but the ability of the token holder to apply that uh, knowledge acquired into real world projects or situations. So what this means is that organizations that create these programs and contributors that go through these programs can eventually access opportunities to gain real world experience, which nowadays Experience, because the, the workplace is so fluctuating and, and changing all the time, experience is a really valuable commodity. So what is the methodology of Andamio? So contributors that are interested in participating in one of Andamio instances or a program go through a four module phase, right? The first is onboarding, and this covers what is it and how can I get started? Then you go to building background knowledge, which you learn how does it work and what do I need to know? Then you go to specialization, which covers how do I do it? And then you go to contributions, which is contributing to real world projects. And this is just a, another visualization of how the process works. And as you can see, it's a cycle where you can go learning skills and applying those skills in real world projects. Uh, finally, we can talk about the Andamio features. What does the platform offer? And we've already talked about a few of, uh, about a few of them, such as project-based learning, um, uh, sorry, mastery-based assessments and uh, contribution. I think I'm missing one. And on-chain skill cont and contribution recording, but we also have treasury management and this allows for the distribution of rewards. And we also have a governance engine. And what this allows is for a customization of the ways that uh, assessments are validated. So you can choose a teacher token to validate assessments, but you can also do peer-to-peer -peer -to -peer review and allow the community or the contributors to evaluate assessments and validate this mastery. And this gets recorded, this is transparent, so people can use and evaluate different ways of validating this mastery and uh, um, to, as a way to validate, as a way to test and experiment different ways of, of doing this. So the budget for this proposal is 450,000 ADA. This pays for six months of work. It's important to mention that we've already worked for, for, we've already worked for six months, taking the product to the stage that it's at. Uh, this represents 5% of the challenge, and this would be 100% open source. 
And then uh, the budget allocation is presented here. One of our main cost drivers is beta testing because that's development work, that's expensive. And because the end goal of this proposal, this is a product development proposal, is to take it to market because we believe that it's not just a web three problem, it goes to web two. So it's something that can scale and it can be sustainable. The idea is to create a, a solid go-to-market strategy. This is our team, uh, which I'm sure you know most of them, especially the one on the left, upper left corner. And uh, these are our communication channels. Please feel free to reach out. Any suggestions, comments, or, or questions uh, are welcome. Thank you. Oof, that was close. Thanks, Roberto. We let you go a few minutes over, but that's the benefit of going last, I guess, right? So. <laughs> I thought I was just in time. I had like my little timer and I was like, okay, I have like a couple Thanks. seconds left. No, hey, everybody. Um, first of all, thank you for your time today. Um, and thank you to all presenters uh, for being so mindful of time throughout. We got through a lot right there. Uh, and just on a personal note, I'm feeling really inspired right now. And there's so many conversations I'm eager to follow up with. Um, next Tuesday, our plan was to transition into Gimbal Labs Playground, but if we held off on that for a week and did another session like this, would people want to present there? Uh, I know that Lucas, Tavo, Simon, and Jose uh, all wanted to get a slot and we kind of filled up. We'll, voting will already be started, but it'll be ongoing. Um, should we just run this session again? So you mean on, on the next playground session or when? Yeah, a week from today on September 5th. If we if we did a session just like this one, uh, Lucas, would you come present? Sure, sure. Oh, I'll, I'll just have to be on the, on the top part of it, but- um, Absolutely, I'll, yeah, I'll, we can. I'll, let's, we could even start the agenda with the four people who have already signed up for a slot. And then if there's other folks, we could let them go. Yeah. Simon, yep, would that work good. for you? That works for me. Yep. Awesome. That'd be great. Awesome. Is Tavo still here? He might have had to jump. Um, and is Jose. Jose, would you be able to attend next week to present? Yes, yes. I can I can do it. All right, let's do that. Yeah, we'll we'll hold off on playground for another week. Do this again right in the middle of voting. And if you know anybody who needs a space to share about their proposals, um, be sure to let them know and invite them for next week. Um, everybody, seriously, thank you for for inspiring. Um, I'm so excited for voting to be done, just so we know what the answers are, and we can move on with our lives and keep building stuff. Thank you for all the attention and all that you put into this. Um, just for anybody, just, I, I said it at the start, we meet at this Zoom link every Tuesday at 1800 UTC, and everybody's welcome to drop by. Next week, like we just decided, we're going to do another session like this one, but on Tuesdays to follow from September through June, if you ever have an idea and you need to run it by people, or you're looking for collaborators, or you're wondering if it's technically feasible, that's what this space is for. So just keep this in mind. If you ever need to have a conversation about something you're building, uh, that's what Gimbal Labs Playground is for. Uh, and be in touch. We're a community of builders, educators, and community builders who uh, really do believe that we're gonna make a difference in the world. So if that resonates, be sure to reach us. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to stop the live stream, but can hang on for just a minute. If anybody has any follow-up questions, if you've been watching this, be sure to be in touch. Thanks, everybody.